For the past five years, I have faced calamity, having been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Even though I am facing colon cancer stage two, my love for God is still intact. My name is Apostle John Paul Moses Masharia Murevi, and this is my story. At times, when facing a calamity, many of us Christians tend to shift our eyes from where our help comes from and focus on our distress. When the world started caving in for Apostle John Paul Moses Masharia, his faith in God remained intact, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. The songs, the dance, and the articulation of the word, the services are always lit. Every time he is to preside over a church service, his able assistants aid him in putting on his apostolic vestments. As a young lad, John Paul discovered a special gift and a vocation from within. For sure I know I was born in a, with a calling to serve and minister God. I didn't used to behave so much like just a normal boy. I was so much into gathering the kids, preaching to them, listening to gospel music. When Apostle John Paul was ordained, his childhood dreams came true and has since served in different churches. Close to two decades now, Apostle John Paul hardly misses a church service and can tell of the few times he has failed to. It was that Sunday morning when I just got sick and it became worse. And so I had to, I, I became unconscious. I only, one thing I only remember is telling whoever I was with the hospital would want us to learn to. Because I, I actually told them, I don't think we shall get to St. Francis when I am still alive. And when I woke up and found myself, I am in hospital. That morning, we had planned with the, the, the one who, who gave me the backup in, in church when we are singing, even the song that you are to sing that Sunday. I, I became so mad because I felt now this is, and I felt I, I, I have not done something I was supposed to do. He is passionate about his calling and the Great Commission has been his agenda. As he proclaims the power of Jesus in our weakness, his posture and speech can tell that all is not well. But who is Apostle John Paul Moses Masharia? I was born and raised in Laikipia County. My dad died when I was still a small boy, and from there, I was raised by my mom, only as a single mother, until now when I became a teenager, 
and started working for myself. My life was full of strain and struggle because from the time my dad passed on, my mom went through a lot of challenges. She had to go to people's farms to try and work for them so that she can feed us. And uh, the strain continued to a point now there was a dispute between her and the family of my father which subjected to her taking us to her mother's place, my grandma. Raised closely by his grandmother, John Paul faced rejection from a tender age. Because of the way my grandma embraced me, because even any time there would be any differences between my mother and the family of my father, my grandma now used to talk more about me and she used to own me. Despite all the childhood challenges, he was privileged enough to go through primary school. I remember I went to my aunt and I, I told her, uh, uh, Auntie, uh, I've come because I want you to take me to, to school. He told me, Dad, you know I don't have money. But I told her, Auntie, you have to, to, to know what you shall do because today I want you to take me to school or I will take myself. And when I started proceeding, now my aunt told me, I only have 500 shillings. And uh, I told her, that is enough, let us go. So even on the way to the school, I went preaching to my aunt. I, I want you to trust in God that when we get there, they will, they will have mercy on me and accept me. Although it was a big struggle because, you know, I didn't have the school fees. So I was always, like always, out of school. Even many people whom we schooled together, not many of them who knows me. Only those who are so much close to me or those who we came from the same village because most of the time I was out of school. And I always used to plead with the principal so that I can be accepted to go to school for the exam. Because when I am out of school, I used even to go to primary teachers and beg them to now give me a coach so that I can understand some few things. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, I managed to get to Form 4. I did my KCSE and uh, I get to, in my opinion, with the strain and struggle, I always say I did my best because in Form 4 I got a separate. Upon clearing high school, he got into a relation and soon a child was born. They used to call them unwanted babies, but mine, I always say she was wanted because she was a blessing to me. Even before he could settle down with his family, an opportunity opened up for him to join the ministry and he traveled out of the country. After some years, that's when I came back to the country and I had to look now to the mother of, the, of, my, ch of my child. We did a wedding and we decided now we have to move on as husband and wife. Together with his wife, Rachel, they started a ministry of reaching out to the needy children in the community. Now we continued that way, <clears throat> with the ministry and the, and the charity. Until now when uh, I, be, I started becoming sick in 2018, my sickness came it was a sudden, sudden sickness. I started developing nausea until that one night <coughs> when I had a very bad and severe stomachache. I had to call everybody. You people, you know you should come because I, I'm, I'm dying. And uh, now from there it developed to vomiting a lot, <coughs> diarrhea a lot, and it continued nonstop. The following day, I was admitted. 
one condition after another, the doctors ran a number of tests without getting to the root cause of his ailment. So I started now being referred to physicians, gastroenterologists, psychiatric, to a point now because I continued with the imaging, endoscopy, they said they have noticed a lot of inflammation. Uh, and now I was ref uh, now referred to uh, an ENT and even after checking on me, he proposed that we do tonsillectomy. Years into misdiagnosis, his condition was fast getting out of hand. I now started breeding. Until now, when now I was referred to a certain gastroenterologist who proposed that I, I should go now to be operated. They opened the, my stomach to now address the issue that was in the stomach. Uh, I did a procedure that was known as a Nissen for duplication. Uh, after that procedure, the doctors had hope that I would get well. But after that, it became worse. It became worse. Now the pain became so too much, the breathing became too much, the vomiting became too much, the diarrhea became too much, the pain became too much. I remember it was until uh, year 2021, now when the doctor started suspecting it could be colon cancer. Because I remember there's one doctor who told my mother, then I was with my mother, and he told her, you know, I have been doing some research about this issue, and uh, I, I, I can tell you with conviction that your son has cancer. And, and so my mom asked, her, asked him, do you want to tell me that my son has cancer? The doctor said yes. You said cancer, the doctor said yes. Now that started another problem because my mom could not hold it. They finally got a proper diagnosis that opened a can of worms, changing their lives forever. Find out more after this short break. FamilyNews.today provides an escape room from the clutter through our podcasts from church escapades. We get disappointed with God, and I think it's a it's a misplaced anger. To daily devotionals. The beauty about God's love is that it was focused on all that God had. To financial and life tips, bedtime stories for your child, all these and much more available just for you on FamilyNews.today on Spotify, Google Podcast, and SoundCloud. Insight at your fingertips. I do, in sickness and in health, till death do a spot, are some of the famous lines in marriage vows. But how many live up to these vows to have their happily ever after? This young couple was devastated by the doctor's report as John Paul's body was growing weaker and frail every passing minute. He had taken a break from work and his wife Rachel had to fully step in. There's Rachel's families who are in Dubai. So there are things we used to go for in Dubai. And we go, we, we bring here in Kenya and sell them to some people who, who, who have shops in town. So I had sent her in Dubai and she had to stay there for some time. But unfortunately, that year 2020, in December the 22, later got an accident. They were studying somewhere According, the uncle is the one who called me because her uncle is in Dubai, but him and his family have stayed there for long. He called me and told me uh, there was an accident that happened and uh, the, a truck lost control 
and it had hit it had hit a, a lot of people. I, I remember telling him there were 43 of them and by bad luck Lecho was among them and we have lost her. His wife's demise left the family between a rock and a hard place. They laid Rachel to rest and embarked onto the journey to health. When the doctor talked about me being with cancer, my mom couldn't hold it. Because from there, she, she started becoming so much disturbed. And she used to always ask me, and now that the doctor said that you have cancer, uh, you know, I've seen many patients with cancer and they don't add up well. And I don't think as your mother, I can stand watching you as you die of cancer. Though she was away from her son, her mental health was deteriorating. And in September 2021, my mom called me that morning and she told me I, I, I just felt I want to say hi to know how you slept, did you sleep well and uh, because you know the, 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 the sickness, this sickness caused a lot of complications in my body and uh, because I developed a problem with my liver uh, the, the doctors told me they have noticed I have a growth at the liver and even the kidneys they said they have noticed some knobs growing in two of my kidneys and again uh, my backbone failed because that colon cancer is here at the center of the cord and also there was a time uh, I was told my heart had some fluid it, so it was being removed from here and again uh, there are times my lung collapse and uh, <coughs> when my lungs collapse I can't speak I always train to speak, but the voice cannot come out. And uh, that day, my mom was always at lungs. And uh, what are the doctor saying? Are they saying that those lungs will get well? Now, she wasn't asking about if, I'll get, if this cancer will be cured or about anything else. He was asking, did the doctor say that those lungs will get well? And I, I, I used to tell her many times because she, that day she called like, she called like seven times. Yes, yes, ma'am. The doctor said I'll go well. The persistent calls from his mother left a lot of anxiety in him and he decided to visit her early the next day. We reached at a place called Kabita and I called my sister and told her, you know, we are at Kabiti on our way to Nanyuki and uh, I hope mom has woken up and I hope Mukimo is getting ready. So my sister told me, if you are coming, just come. And I told, I had some friends of mine, but I'm not the one who was driving, someone else was driving. And I told them, I don't know why my sister have given me that kind of a weird answer. But, it, but uh, and I started getting bothered. And uh, we, we moved on until when we reached to Kalatina, past Kalatina, uh, like three kilometers. Now my brother called me and told me, where are you? And I was told that you are coming. I told him um, I'm even almost because um, we are past Kalatina. He told me, you should come first uh, because here things are not well. Uh, and I asked her, what is, what is wrong? She told me that mom has passed on. And I asked her, him, what? What have you said? She, he, told, he, he repeated, mom has pa passed on. That was the hardest and saddest news no one expects to hear. Seeing the lifeless body of his mother lying in a police car rushed his spirit. His world was shattered. What has killed my mother is what was spoken that I have cancer. And one thing that tortures me a lot every time I think 
about this sickness is that this sickness killed my mother. His mother was laid to rest and Apostle John Paul was left to fight on, but this time all by himself. Since wakati my mom aliaga, our family abandoned us. Hata hakuna mwenye alitufuata, hata simu. Najaribu mimi mwenyewe kuwa beg. Naambia uncle, si unitumie just a lousy ninunulie buranga gundawa. Unasikia wana kudanganya, mwingine ana kubrok. So ni ngumu, ni ngumu wenye wenye familia wanaishi hivyo mimi naweza waombea Mungu sana. They have that love, their family. I always say and I told them I have now proved the only blood family that was connecting me and that that was that I, the only blood family that I have or that I was left with is my sister, not any one of you. When we are in dire need of support, family and friends may abandon us, but God will never forsake us. Apostle John Paul has since found a family and made new friends. Nikampenda tu hivyo na nikaendelea kumuombea mpaka pahali kukafika nikawa nalia sana. Akilia na mimi ninalia. Nikauliza Mungu, huyu mtumishi wako analia analia for help. Unataka nimsaidie aje? Cuz hiyo milioni 5.6 siwezi nikapata. Ndivyo mnikasikia nimewekelewa mzigo nikaambiwa muombe. There's something my mom told me, used to tell me. If I would go a journey that someone never comes back. This mama Kanisa who always cry and pray for you is your mother. And what you can do to me, do it to her. Niku ni kuchikiria kuachikiria tu katika huduma moral support na chochote kile tu kinahitajika na mahali sasa natakikana na simama tu kama mzazi. Mm, vile tu mnakaa na mama yako kwenye ama vile tu muna, ma, mama anaishi katika nyumba ni hivyo tu kile kinatakana na alafu na upande wa chachi mm. na tena nashukuru sana for the for, for the brothers tulipewa na Mungu the sisters Mungu alitupatia juu wamejaribu sana 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 kupigana na hiyo vita ya John Paul kumshikiria sometimes hata wakati si uko karibu kuna wenye wako karibu na ye, wakiana waka, kama hana raha kuna mwenye anajaribu kumkeep bise you see so hiyo ndio life apart from serving god in his ministry apostle john paul has been carrying on with the charity they started with his late wife i have adopted that thing kids i'm the one who pay for their school fees and make sure they they are okay and here there is cancer so uh, there was a time it was hard very hard for us because my my kid had to go around this area with friars trying to look for some coins so that at least we can get food we can get medication it has been a very tough journey. And when times are hard, I always tell them something very simple. My kids, you know I'm your loving dad who always loved to make her kid, his kids happy, to provide for you, and to always make sure you are content and comfortable. One thing I want you to keep in your mind and in your heart. It has been well with us. It is not well right now, but it shall be well forever and ever. Cancer is a painful and an exorbitant disease to treat. 
Apostle John Paul has deprived his resources in pursuit of his health, having to take over 107 tablets a day and more stronger infusions when all the tablets fail. However, he has been scheduled for a more specialized treatment that would be the ultimate goal of his health. The whole procedure will cost 5.6 million. Now, I started now the journey of looking for the 5.6 million uh, and it became so hard because now, you know, I'm always in and out of hospital and taking medicines. I have kids I'm taking care of. It has been five years of calamity, courageously walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But what keeps him going? The love I have for God. Because not once, not twice, not thrice, those who has been walking this journey with me have ever thought, now I do not think by morning he will be alive. I do not think by evening he will be alive. But by God's grace and by the power of the blood of Jesus, by that morning I am still alive and sober. By that evening, I am still alive and sober. And what they always do, the way you've seen them, it is just praying and crying to God. That's what has kept me alive. And that is one big reason why I always feel I am so much in love with God. I have that strong affection and passion to serve God because it is His wonders and mercies that has kept me alive today. Actually, I'm always so much humbled when many people tell me, I feel so much humbled because of you, the way you are ministering God, without ceasing, without giving up, without complaining. And I even ask myself, what have I been doing? There are even people who tell me, I've decided to get saved because of you. I just love your faith and I just love the way you are ministering God in the situation you are in. And to anyone who is fighting cancer, don't give up. The Bible says, he is cursed. Whoever depends on a man, he is like a seed that is planted on a rock. Don't think of your family. Don't even think of your close friend. Don't even think of someone who thought that he or she loves and cares a lot about you. It is only when you are in the midst of the calamity you will know who cares for you. And in the midst of the calamity, it is God who will send the right person to come and stand with you and walk with you until the end of the Lord. It is our prayer and our hope that God will fight for Apostle John Paul and soon he will be back on his feet. If you have a story you would like to share with us, kindly text us on 20316 or WhatsApp on 0786 316 316 and we will get back to you.